Hello. This little video is about the structure of finite fields. And um, the symmetries for beings automorphisms. So let's start with the finite field. Um, we looked into that again, into that before. If it is finite, then uh, the minimal sum of one of element one from this field, which is zero, should be a prime, and that is called the characteristic. And in the field theoretic sense, we could just say that we have a, a smaller subfield being the field of integers mod p, which is denoted this way. And um, since it is finite, the degree is also finite, so let's fix it to be this number d. And that really makes um, the number of elements possible to compute. It will be the power of the characteristic, the dth power. So a simple argument from group theory. It is a field, so everything but zero forms a multiplicative group forms a group, the multiplicative group of the field. The order of this group will be the total number without zero, without one. So by Lagrange theorem, uh, we know that any non-zero element of our field raised to this power is equal to one. And if we want to bring back zero, we can just multiply, throw it by zero, and then have this analog of Fermat's little theorem, that this is always equal to the actual number if the number is from our field. So um, any field element is a root of the polynomial. And moreover, our field must be its splitting field. Well, uh, simply because this polynomial is separable, uh, which can be seen by computing its derivative, which happens to be just negative 1, because the derivative of this monomial is 0. p is 0 when seen as a coefficient. So negative 1 as a derivative makes automatic uh, the, the greatest common divisor being, say, 1. The polynomial is separable. All its roots, wherever they are, they are fine, they are different, and we have a place where we have all the roots for this polynomial and they're all different and we have as many as uh, possibly could we could have just the degree so that must be a or better the splitting field of this polynomial and we checked before that splitting fields are unique up to an isomorphism. And what we started with is an arbitrary um, finite field of a given number of elements, and we ended up that it should be unique up to an isomorphism. So finite fields of the same size are isomorphic. And our field is uh, as good as any other field of that size, of that cardinality, and um, up to isomorphism. And then, um, to acknowledge that fact, we just have one notation for all such, because they are indistinguishable, um, just recording their size, their cardinality. So that is um, basically it for the structure theory. Um, let's look at the symmetries. I will start in a slightly more general Context, I will start with a commutative algebra.
over the same prime field over the field of p elements. Um, basically dropping the invertibility for the beginning of the story. Now we'll define a certain homomorphism from A into itself, which will be called this uh, Frobenius. It is defined by simple formula. Any element is raised to the pth power. And it looks flawed because um, how possibly can it be additive? How possibly can it satisfy this for any choices of A and B? But it does, because if we look at this side, that is a sum raised to the pth power. And using the binomial formula, we can rewrite it into the sum of powers of A and B uh, multiplied by binomial coefficients. If we look at one of those binomial coefficients, at any of them, we can use this uh, factorial formula and see immediately that all but the extreme coefficients for k being 0 or p, all other coefficients are divisible by p. We have p factorial upstairs and nothing downstairs can um, get rid of this p upstairs. So all coefficients in the pth power expansion, but the extreme are zeros, not p, and we are left with the extremes, which are pth power of a and pth power of b. So this um, is true, not p. The definition makes multiplicativity straightforward, obvious. And uh, the last thing to observe in, as this is an algebra homomorphism, meaning that the scaleless elements of uh, the integers mod p are fixed. And that is because um, Fermat's little theorem, at that, that is just the exact statement, the pth power of any integer mod p is congruent to the, to the integer. So we have this general construction of Frobenius homomorphism. Let's apply it to our situation of a field. So if now we have a field um, of characteristic P, uh, meaning that the smallest subfield is the field of P elements, then this Frobenius, which is defined, is injective. Different elements will have to go to different elements because the kernel of this homomorphism is an ideal in the field, and the field doesn't have non trivial ideals, the only ideals have has is zero and the whole thing. And it cannot be the whole thing because, say, one element one goes to itself, so it must be that the kernel is zero, and hence we have this injectivity. And now uh, the last piece of reduction is to assume that f is a field, is a finite field. Now we have an in injective map uh, between uh, this finite field and itself. The number of elements will obviously be the same, and injectivity must mean bijectivity, so the um, Frobenius homomorphism is an automorphism. And uh, let's compute, let's um, um, really um, look into this question. Let's compute the order of this as an element of the automorphism group. So what is the smallest power, that is the order, of that symmetry of that automorphism, which is identity. And um, we could immediately see from this uh, um, identity satisfied by all elements of our field that the dth power of the Frobenius, Frobenius is uh, the identity. So definitely it is uh, a divisor of d. Uh, but we can see that no smaller power is because we will have definitely have elements which raised to the smaller than d power, say d minus 1, are not equal to x. And so any other power, any smaller power, will also not be equal to x. And that is simply because if 
uh, all elements are satisfying the smaller identity, uh, then they will have to be from the smaller degree extension just by this argument. So the, um, the answer for the order of this element in the automorphism group is D. And what we have is this um, inside our automorphism group my f is after all one of those uh, is uh, the cyclic group the element the Frobenius itself and hence a cyclic group and the order of this is d and the order of this should not be larger than the degree so it must be um, the whole group the order is the degree of this subgroup so it must be the whole group and it's also a proof that uh, all these fields are Galois extensions of the uh, of their prime subfields. And that is, of course, a cyclic group of order, which is a degree. So that is the final answer we have um, for the symmetry group. I'll stop here. We'll see you later.